three ingredients, potatoes, salt, and extra virgin olive oil. And it can't be any salt. You want coarse sea salt. Don't use table salt, it won't be good. So these are potatoes from a garden that I grew at my lease property. We just harvested them, uh, they're like less than a week old. So you could definitely make this recipe with store-bought potatoes, but I highly encourage you to go out, plant some potatoes in your garden and use this recipe with fresh potatoes. It will blow your mind, I promise. I've got a little fry later over there. I'm gonna show you how we cut these into chips and then we're gonna fry them up in my fry later. So I'll show you how we do it, let's go. All right, so this is my little countertop fry later. It's just like a wearing brain. I bought it at K-Tom Restaurant Supply and I used to work there, but they don't pay me to tell you any of it. So I just filled it with this. So it's extra virgin olive oil and it makes a difference, but trust me, this stuff is gonna make your chips the best chips in the world. I got my fryer filled up with extra virgin olive oil to the max line and I want it around 350 degrees. So my little dial goes like 355. So it's pretty close. I'm just trying to dial it back just a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you how we cut the potatoes. These are mandolin, so let's go do that. This is my mandolin, and it's a professional grade mandolin, which I also got from K-Tom Restaurant Supply. And I don't think they actually sell this on their website. I like special ordered it when I worked there. And it's made by a company called Braun Cock. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so all mandolins are not created equal. You want a high quality mandolin like this. You don't want like a cheap Winko. You don't want a Japanese mandolin. Japanese mandolins only slice. This has these julienne blades and actually what we're gonna be using today is like the wavy cut blade. So you lift that thing up and see how that's got wavy cuts. We're gonna make like ruffle chips, it's gonna be amazing. So I was gonna put my mandolin on something. And then I put these parchment paper just for easy cleanup. So the potatoes will all fall onto this instead of my table. So I don't have to like clean up the mess, you know. There's blades right here, but I don't want to use those blades. And then there's a little lever on the side. I got to take that down and that just like disengages the, those blades. And then this, you can see how I can close that gap up to make our chips nice and thin. I'm controlling it with a little lever right there. But my potatoes cut long, so I selected some really nice big potatoes that are from my garden, and these are Yukon Golds. So I'm gonna be like slice them the long way. And so I'm gonna slide this down the mandolin until I hit this blade. And then I'm gonna twist it like this, and then I twist it like this every time, back and forth, so that it creates like a cross and then it's gonna give you like a nice ruffle chip. So I'll show you how to do it. So you can see how it cuts it like that. So you just like twist the potato every time. But I want them a little bit thicker than that. That's a little bit thin. They'll kind of burn a little bit more if they're too thin. So you won't be thick enough, but you don't want too thick because then they don't get crispy. And then you want to be super careful because this blade's sharp. So when you get down to the last part of the potato, you want to be really careful. It's not worth it to try to get a chip out of the last few little slices. Just toss it out. All right. And then the chips just kind of look like this. Pretty thin. And then we're just gonna drop them in the fryer. You gotta have something like this so you can kind of like keep them from sticking to each other. So you gotta agitate it as they cook. Otherwise they'll just stick together and they won't get crispy all around. It's most important when you first drop them in because that's when they're gonna wanna stick to each other. And then I just kind of break up the crumbs of this and you wanna be very careful that you don't put too much potato chips in here because it'll make it overflow. So just a small amount of potato chips, like one to two potatoes at a time. Um, and make sure you fill it up to the max line and then agitate it pretty good with this. And then I just got like this big stainless steel bowl that I'm gonna dump them into. But you could dump them into any bowl. It doesn't have to be a big stainless steel one like this. You could dump them on a plate with a paper towel, um, anything like that. Okay, so I'm looking for some of them to be nice and golden brown. Kind of like that. Oil's nice and fresh. They won't get super dark, so that's good. These are all nice, kind of golden brown, and that's what I'm looking for. And that's how you know they're nice and crispy. You want to shake off as much oil as possible.
So there's three ingredients, potatoes, salt, and extra virgin olive oil. And it can't be any salt. You want coarse sea salt. Don't use table salt, it won't be good. You wanna make sure you're using coarse sea salt. In fact, don't use table salt at all. Just throw your table salt out and always use coarse sea salt when you cook. All right, y'all, so this is what it looks like when they're done. Nice, golden, brown, crispy goodness. Mmm. Mmm. All right, y'all, so we're not just gonna have potato chips for dinner tonight, we're gonna have fried chicken too. So I'm gonna show you how we make fried chicken here. So it's gonna be chicken, my egg wash, and then my dry mix is gonna be flour, panko breadcrumbs, onion powder, and salt, and that's it. So I got some nice chicken here, pasture-raised chicken from my buddy Kevin at Lamb Basket Farm, and he's my next door neighbor at the Saturday Farmer's Market, so. I always try to get my chicken from him whenever possible. And it literally is the best chicken in the world and gives people a money back guarantee. He's got this spiel. He says, if this ain't the best chicken you've ever had in your life, you come back next week, I'll give you your money back. And I watch people week after week go up to him and say, you told me that you give me my money back. It wasn't the best chicken that I've ever had. And he says, and? And they say, and I'd like to buy another chicken. Okay, so now I'm gonna bread my chicken and I got my chicken kind of staged here on the cutting board and then this plate. So I'm gonna go in here into my dry material first and then my egg wash back into here and then I'm gonna stage them all on the plate here so I can bring them over to my fryer to fry them all at once. So they like sink to the bottom, so I'm trying to like keep them up so they don't burn on the elements. So. And then when they're cooked, so they'll float. That's how you know when they're done. They'll just float to the top, but right now they're like heavy and they're sinking to the bottom, so I'm trying to keep them from sticking. Okay, so now they're floating, and so I can grab them out with my tongs, and I'm gonna just put them on this plate with paper towels so they can kind of drain and stay crispy. All right, y'all, so I got my sugar-free honey barbecue sauce here. I'm gonna eat that with my fried chicken. That's some good fried chicken right there. You probably ain't gonna catch me going through the drive-thru anytime soon, but I still eat fried chicken. This is how we do it on Chef's Harvest Farm. Pasture-raised organic chicken that my friend raised, organic potatoes from my backyard. We still eat fried chicken, fried potatoes here, and I encourage you to know where your food comes from. Like and subscribe so that I can help you continue to grow your own food and learn how to cook it too. I'll see y'all later.